Okay, Cassidy, I hope I'm audible to everybody. Um, uh, I'm excited, as I, I guess you would expect, uh, to be able to celebrate the good news that we've come to an uh, uh, arrangement to get the Big Ten as, uh, fall sports seasons, uh, specifically, of course, football, um, uh, going uh, late next month. I know it's been – I understand the frustration of people uh, who have uh, – uh, not known whether this would happen, and if so, under what conditions. And while I completely understand and sympathize with that, I, my, my own view is that the time that the conference took over these last few weeks has been time well spent. Just as in trying to protect the campus as a whole, a lot has been learned, and uh, some new technologies or improvements have come along in the interim. And now we'll be able to start a, a nine-game season uh, under safer conditions than we would have had in place uh, a few weeks ago, and really under the safest conditions of any conference in the country. So I, uh, I was very pleased to see this come together, was a, an advocate for it, and, uh, and, and recommend it uh, to, our, to our fans and, and to Big Ten fans everywhere. I really do believe that uh, the, uh, uh, we have a excellent product now, an excellent chance to and not just start but complete uh, a season with all the great uh, uh, joy and, and uh, 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 fulfillment that it brings to this campus and every campus in our conference. So uh, Mike Babinski and Coach Brom and I are uh, all on the call, as least as I understand it. And I think Cassidy will moderate. Be glad to take any questions anyone has. We just speak up. Sorry, I was on mute. No, sorry. <laughs> yes, I am going to moderate. Um, I'm going to actually throw it over to Mike really quick um, to make a few comments as well, and then followed by Coach Brom. Turn the volume down. Technology is a wonderful thing, except uh, when it's when it's not. We're, we're still, still figuring it out. Uh, like President Daniels said, uh, first of all, welcome. Thanks for thanks for joining us today. This is a good day, uh, an op a day of optimism and, and looking forward. Uh, I, I'd just like to say that, uh, in addition to our, our council of presidents and chancellors who put in lots of uh, sort of ad hoc time getting themselves uh, up to speed on on all the issues around returning to competition uh, lots of lots of great work was put in by uh, medical professionals doctors team team physicians uh, our own head of uh, sports medicine and performance Doug Borsma and many others around the conference to get us to a to a great place here from a medical protocol perspective in addition uh, lots of other people worked on uh, what schedules might look like and how we might move forward from a uh, in conjunction with our television and media partners, so there's been lots and lots of great conversation that's uh, gone into making this uh, this this come to fruition. Now, as we sit here today, we look forward to uh, the end of October when we're able to actually begin competition, and I uh, think that uh, that that'll be a really positive day for uh, everyone around the Big Ten, and just look, just looking forward to it. So, and uh, let Coach Brom say a few things, and then we'll get going. technology all right sorry y'all so now it's coach from thank you uh without question we're excited uh, our football team our players our coaches to get back on the field playing football uh we're very thankful to have this opportunity and uh we also know that a lot has gone into this process there's been a lot of hard work and a lot of people that have expressed their opinion but really behind the scenes, we've gotten a lot of hard work to get answers and to get improvements that I think a lot of information was brought in front of our athletic directors, uh, in front of our presidents. Oh, and one chairs. of these might be free. And we, we, we definitely, uh, you know, those things helped us get back on the field. So I, I want to thank, uh, you know, our president, President Daniels, and all the presidents and chancellors across the uh, Big Ten, and uh, Mike Lipinski and all the athletic directors and all the medical personnel that put in all the hard work to get accurate information to get uh, you know to do studies and to make sure that we're providing the, the safest environment we can for our football players and we do feel at this point uh, with the daily 
antigen testing that will be done uh, with all the cardiac protocols that we have in place uh, that we will field uh, one of the safest uh, conferences in the country as far as how we're going to uh, combat uh, the COVID-19 issue, and uh, we feel like we got a great plan. But I know our players are excited to get back working, get back to competition, and hopefully we can make this an exciting year. Great. Thank you, Coach. All right, so we'll start the Q&A now. Um, Mike Carmen. Uh, first question is uh, to Mitch, I guess specifically in your mind, what what really changed the last month for you to – for you and the other presidents to come around and say, okay, it's safe to play football now. Yeah, Coach Brom just mentioned, uh, I think, that uh, two of the most important uh, differences, Mike. Uh, number one, the uh, advance of antigen testing, the chance of had to have a, a, a almost immediate uh, answer on an everyday basis for every player, a huge step forward over what we thought we might be uh, able to uh, – have in place uh, originally. And then uh, just about the time practice was getting ready to start and so forth, this this uh, myocardia uh, question, and I, I don't think it's more than a question, erupted. And there were there were uh, a, a lot of, uh, of people who wanted to know about that. And now the Big Ten have the most advanced testing system and this myocardial registrar uh, uh, and uh, uh, presumably uh, uh, the best of precautions of anybody on that front. I think those were the, the two most important uh, uh, findings. And, uh, and again, uh, uh, despite the uh, frustration we all felt over these weeks, I think this was time well spent. I'll say it again. I think we now, our teams can now go forward uh, under much safer conditions or mo uh, with greater confidence at least than we would have had uh, initially. And, 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 uh, we will be the safest uh, conference uh, uh, anywhere in the country. Uh, if I have a question for uh, Mr. Bobinski, uh, from a, I know the schedule is not out yet. It's going to be eight regular season games plus the one. But can you give an idea of the framework of that schedule? Is that going to be a pure four home games, four road games? Uh, kind of what what are some of the details that you can share about that? You know, Mike, I, I don't have enough details to be really definitive regarding that. But my, my sense is, and I know there's been lots of work being done uh, at the conference level to get this right, but my, my sense is it'll be our previous nine-game schedule that we had, nine-conference game schedule, with losing one of our crossover games. Uh, so we will uh, – I, I think we'll end up – each school will end up with four home, four away. Uh, games will be played at campus sites during, the, during those regular season games. Uh, what will happen on that last week of crossover sort of uh, seeded games. Uh, the championship game will still be at Lucas Oil Stadium uh, down in Indianapolis. I don't know where the other games will be, but that might be something where we would consider domes also. That just hasn't – we haven't gotten to that point yet. But, uh, but my sense it would be our nine previous games, absent one, um, and, and then uh, go from there. Uh, and just to be clear, you're talking about the original nine-game schedule – uh, back in January or whatever, back before yes, COVID. Yes, yeah, uh, exactly. The nine-game schedule that we began, that, that we printed on our schedule cards some, some time ago. Uh, and this one question for Jeff. Sorry, one quick, really quick. If y'all aren't – if you could mute your um, microphones, I think that would be helpful. Thank you. Right. Uh, just just one, one question for Jeff. Just what, what's next for your football team and program uh, – program? as far as when will you kind of crank up training camp and, and kind of get those things to go on. And one additional one, any, any chance Rondell would come back uh, and opt back into the season? A lot of good questions. I knew that one was coming up, Mike, but uh, <laughs> you know what? Uh, I think right now our, our guys have been working out hard in the weight room uh, conditioning wise. We've gotten back on the field uh, to a certain extent and just helmets doing some work. Uh, and not as extensive as you would normally do during the camp. Uh, we'll continue to, to do that this week. I know next week we'll probably slightly pick that up as well to make sure we're getting acclimated and back ready to play. And I believe the following week uh, on a Tuesday, as of now, I don't think it's set in stone, but uh, maybe the first day in, in shells with the uh, following, that following day on Wednesday, the first day in pads, but that's still, uh, I don't know if that is fully set in stone, but 
we feel good about where we're at, uh, and our guys are excited to get back out there. It's something that we were hopeful for, but didn't know how it was going to play out. But either way, we were going to continue to prepare. So I think our guys are, are looking forward to, to getting this thing kicked off the right way. Uh, when it comes to Ron Dell, first off, we're going to support any decision uh, he wants to make and, and, and going forward and, and the avenue he wants to go. But, yes, it's something that uh, we're definitely going to look into and, and see where that goes. All right. I'll pass off. Thank you. Great. Thanks, Mike. Um, Alan Karpik. I'll pass. Okay. Brian Newbert. Okay. Um, to start off, one quick question for President Daniels. Um, if you could maybe speak to the process in terms of after the original August August 11th announcement, how quickly did, did the focus kind of turn to finding a, a short-term solution to this to where you could get back to playing in the fall? Was that like the next day or uh, how quickly did the focus turn toward the uh, ultimate solution here? Yeah. Well, Brian, I, uh, I don't want to go too much into process or what we used to call the TikTok of all this, but I, I will say that I don't, the, I think the conference was always looking for a solution uh, uh, from the, from the day of the, uh, that we hit the pause button. Uh, really, the, the conversations never stopped. I will just tell you that the, my colleagues constantly point out that with all we're dealing with trying to keep campuses open, right. we've put a ton of time into uh, athletics, which I think uh, these last uh, few weeks, which I think just illustrates how important this, we all uh, know this is. So um, mm -hmm. uh, really there was not a, a gap in between the search for a workable solution, and, 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 and as I said, to learn more about these big question marks uh, around cardiac uh, threats and, uh, and the uh, efficacy of testing was uh, 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 that, that the, the search for those answers uh, really uh, went on without interruption. All right. Thank you. And I had a couple of quick questions for Mike. Mike, to start off, um, I don't know if, if you know the terms yet of the media deal here, but do you know what sort of impact this will have on your financial challenges at this point? Uh, Brian, don't have any idea yet what that uh, will ultimately result in. Obviously, we were having a – our schedule is, is somewhat reduced from what the original plan was for this year, uh, and, and I don't believe that we've gotten any level of specificity with Fox or others regarding the, the, the terms of that. So uh, that, that is yet to, yet to come. Okay. Do you know what – form the testing is going to take what specific product you're going to test is going to, is going to be purchasing uh no that that will be specified here honestly i think within days as to exactly which uh, company we're going to partner with from a conference perspective i believe there are two uh very viable options uh in play right now and we, uh, we'll just need to secure one of those but it'll be uh It'll be something where, again, we'll have six or seven day a week daily testing where uh, each each person that's uh, in on the field, whether it be player, coach, staff member that's in and around the team all day, every day, that would be subject to a, a, a daily test that would have to be taken and recorded and, and be negative uh, each and every day in order for them to proceed with activities. Uh, that should begin, I believe, on or around September 30th, no later than the day that we uh, – projecting right now for the first day of, of fully padded practice. Uh, we believe that the testing will be in place and, uh, and executing by that day. Can you just speak to what that might mean for the whole process of contact tracing? I know contact tracing has been the real chore in all of this. Does the potential to test every day, does that really, really alleviate that? Or does contact tracing still a, a significant, really significant concern here? Well, we believe, and I know our medical uh, subcommittee uh, would, would tell you that their proposition is that the daily testing regimen, once you get into this, should really, uh, particularly from an athletic activity perspective, drive the contact tracing down to almost nothing. Uh, you know, you still have to deal with potential contacts that might occur in a social setting or in a way from athletics setting, uh, but, but the actual daily testing regimen uh, by all the medical data and information that we've seen should really drive your infectiousness um, reality down to almost zero, uh, virtually zero. So I think we're going to almost by definition work ourselves out of the need for contact tracing in and around athletic activity. Uh, but but that, that reality doesn't go away for other types of contacts and, uh, and activities. Right. 
Uh, one more question for me for you, and I, I do have one for Jeff. Obviously, we're talking to you before the announcement about basketball season comes down, but do you have a general expectation right now or, or any kind of thoughts on that whole process and how that's going to go? Basketball, what we, what we expect to hear today is the, uh, the start date of the, of the men's and women's basketball seasons and likely a minimum and maximum number of games. Right. Uh, that's going to be done at a national level. We then in the, locally within the Big Ten have to come to grips with uh, what we'll do from a conference, non-conference perspective, uh, how, many, how many games we'll, we'll play as a league, will we play the maximum, and if so, what will that look like in terms of a non-conference and conference uh, split? Uh, just that we, don't, we have not done that yet. We've really been uh, obviously fully engaged uh, in all things football here uh, over the last weeks, months, uh, and, right. and while we know basketball is – uh, is, is, has been an issue. We've had some conversation around it, and the coaches have had lots of conversation around it, but we have not yet fully dealt with that. I, I would expect we'll get to that as quickly as possible. Hopefully days would be my hope. Gotcha. I do have one quick question for Jeff as well. Jeff, can you speak to the, the potential challenges that might come with preparing a football team from a health perspective and a football perspective when you've had, I don't know, how many full contact practices in the span of – the last eight months or, or whatever it's been, is that going to be a challenge at all? I think each team is going to have the ability to get ready to play. Uh, you know, we've had a lot of time uh, to practice in a setting without pads. Um, you know, there was a, a time frame there where, uh, you know, we did give our guys some time off because we didn't think the season was going to start in order than January that we'd like to have back. But at the same time, you know, we've been able to get around our guys. They've been able to be in workouts. They've been able to be around in football meetings, probably even more so than ever as far as how much meeting time we've had. So we just got to make sure we, we spend the time to get them acclimated to uh, putting pads on, to doing some live tackling and live blocking, and, and to make sure that we're up to speed with that. I think it's important even throughout this uh, that we continue to make sure that we practice everyone, maybe more so than we have in the past because you still don't know for sure you know, who's going to be available, and you have to make sure that you're able to, you know, field a team that uh, can play and that uh, if you have a, a few things happen uh, with the COVID issue, we're able to uh, get guys able to step in right away and play and contribute and do a good job. So I think that, uh, you know, we're going to manage it just like every other team. I don't see it as a, a big issue. I think we'll work through it, and uh, we hope to keep guys still as safe as we can because I still think here we've done a pretty uh, good job of making sure that, we haven't let that get out of hand, and that's a uh, credit to not only our medical staff but also our players as well as making sure that they're uh, as responsible as they can be off the field. That covers it for me. Thanks, Thank everyone. I can, uh, I, I, let me just add uh, on to that that I, I just want to testify that this subject of making sure that teams had adequate time to prepare and adequate time for padded practice and all the rest was, was – uh, the, 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 the presidents were – very sensitive to that. It was it was discussed many times, and it was a factor in 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 picking the the uh, start date and the schedule that uh, that that was settled on. So, um, but there was lots of, and I I I hope the coach uh, uh, will uh, uh, see this the same way. There was lots of uh, testimony that the coaches and the ads felt that this schedule would give enough time, given that the other uh, 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 weeks and 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 forms of uh, preparation that have already happened. Thank you, everyone. Great. Thanks, Brian. Um, Tom Dean Hart. Yeah, Jeff. Um, so when, when are you going to hit the practice field next? You going to going out later this week, this weekend? Well, we had a practice on the field yesterday. We'll have another one tomorrow, uh, then another one on Friday. We're under certain guidelines right now as far as how many hours per week we can and uh, what exactly we can do in practice as we have on helmets and and spider pads. Uh, I'm not for sure uh, if that's going to kick into a 20-hour week starting next week or maybe even the following week. I don't have that information yet, but we'll base our practice on that uh, this next week as well as we continue to get acclimated. Uh, and then I know for sure the next week I, I think camp will start. So I, I do feel like that each team will have enough time to get ready, and uh, I think we're all confident that that's going to happen. Uh, I, I want to applaud really um, – you know, our presidents and chancellors, in particular President Daniels, for having the courage and uh, the wisdom uh, to, you know, allow time to be presented more information to see if that uh, could help the process. And uh, I applaud them 
uh, for the decision uh, that they've made uh, both times. And I think that uh, each time they've done it for the, um, the health and safety of our, our, our players, our student athletes. And, and uh, we feel very confident moving forward that uh, with this daily testing uh, and with the plan we have set forth, uh, that uh, we're going to be the safest conference in, in college football moving forward as of right now. Jeff, has your roster changed at all since the last time we talked? Any attrition, any additions, and any word on DJ Johnson's waiver to play this year? Well, DJ's waiver has been submitted. Um, you know, we, we've had a few, you know, cases pop up uh, that we've had to, you know, uh, guys had to take some time off and, and quarantine, and we've had a few contact tracing issues happen. Uh, it hasn't been anything substantial. Uh, to this point, but we are going through that at, uh, currently, but it's not something that we can't overcome. So we feel like we're in a good position now. And then with the, the daily testing that's getting ready to, to hopefully take place by the end of the month, uh, that can really help the process and, and help moving forward. Did you ever have any doubt that you were going to play football in the fall, Jeff, or were you more inclined to want to play in the winter or spring? Well, if you ask if I'd have any doubt, I mean, I, when it was voted that we weren't going to play in the fall, yes, I had doubt we were going to play in the fall. That's why I kind of moved forward to the to the spring, and then it became, okay, maybe we can get a winter season in. And then, um, But as this continued to happen over the course of the last month, more information came in. And when that information came in, especially about the, the possible daily testing, I do think that that added another wrench uh, into the story. And then when you got more information on the cardiac issues, that added another wrench into the story that uh, – you know, we felt like from a football standpoint, with that information, this could possibly help us uh, to play sooner. And, uh, you know, you, saw, you see the other teams going out there playing, and uh, I don't think they have the stringent uh, protocols that we're going to be having going forward. So I think that's what uh, makes everyone more confident that this can work. Uh, and that, I, that, it, that is why I think, you know, being able to, to, to push this season up to get it in right before the end of fall – has been something that is exciting for everyone right now. The hey, last question, Jeff, just talk in general, how your recruiting has been impacted by all this. Well, I think recruiting, uh, going through the pandemic like we are, is gonna be impacted to a certain degree, not being able to get people on campus and to get around uh, young men. I think that's been a huge selling point for us uh, is that we feel great about the facilities we have, about the uh, academic, uh, reputation we have and that the people we have here that when we get guys on campus and we get them in front of us our coaches uh, and all of our academic uh, support help uh, that we normally have a great success rate so we haven't been able to do that but that's 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 been like that way everywhere yes it is beneficial to us to get to to make that happen but I think uh, you know this class isn't going to be as big uh, going forward uh, due to the the uh, the, really the youth of the team to a certain degree and not a whole lot of seniors really not a whole lot of juniors uh, and I think also with the, the possible transfer rules that could be taking place uh, going forward, that you've got to leave some room on your on your roster to be able to adjust and uh, identify certain needs at the end of each season and try to improve your football team. So, uh, you know, we feel good about where we're at. And, uh, you know, we're, we're, we're moving forward uh, on a few more uh, young men that we feel good about that at some point hopefully we'll, we'll get on board and then we'll continue to, uh, you know, fight that recruiting battle each and every day. Thank you. Great. Thanks, Tom. Um, let's go to Andrew from WLFI. It's actually Dakota. Sorry, I'm on the wrong Zoom account. Oh, um, sorry. <laughs> yeah, no worries. Um, this one is for both President Daniels and um, Mike. Just wanted to get a, some insight on how much you guys looked at other leagues. Obviously, Notre Dame played a home game just this past weekend. Um, how much did you were you in communication with maybe presidents, chancellors, athletic directors from the Big 12 or the SEC or the ACC before you wanted to uh, get started with a fall season here? Uh, Dakota, uh, speaking for myself, uh, I didn't talk to any of them. Obviously, I was watching carefully, and, and so was the conference as a whole, but I did not uh, seek out any uh, counterparts uh, elsewhere uh, about uh, football. I, I confess I have sought out a lot of them about the campus as a whole, but um, – uh, but I was watching as a as an attentive fan and trying to learn from the uh, early experience they're having. Same question for Mike as well, if he has a response to that. Sure, thanks, Dakota. Can you hear me, Dakota? I don't think you can. Okay. All right, hold. There you Good. go. There we go. Uh, uh, 
Dakota, well, I, I talk to my colleagues in and around other leagues all the time, but not so much specifically about what they were doing because I felt like you know, we had a pretty good handle on, on what they were doing. And, and we were really more focused from a Big Ten perspective on what we thought uh, would, was necessary for us to play. And, and, and we really haven't used other conferences as a measuring stick from, from a procedure or a protocol standpoint. Uh, what they're doing, uh, you know, is is perfectly fine, and it's uh, and, and it's the best available at that point in time. But we, we do believe, as Jeff has, and President Daniels have alluded to, is that you know we've we, the, the the protocol and the, and the regimen that we're going to undertake here going forward is the most uh, is sort of the gold standard in terms of what, what you can do these days uh, in terms of trying to provide the safest possible environment. So we've we've been focused more more on what what it would take for the Big Ten to get back into action and. Uh, and, and um, thankfully, we're there. And then to follow up, obviously, with, with the shortened season, the, the conference championships, uh, December 19th or, or somewhere around there, this is for Mike and Jeff. How important is it to be able to get the, the season in right around the same time as the other conferences uh, in terms of postseason? We don't know what that might look like, but just to be able to uh, give yourself a, a resume, you know, performance-wise for the postseason and, and what that might entail for you guys. Uh, I'll real, real quick just give a couple thoughts on that. Uh, Dakota, for me, as, as this thing uh, went through a lot of different iterations where we had the initial postponement and then we started to think about spring, winter, other types of, of, of options that might be available, those were all, you know, in, in, the, in the event we needed them, I thought they were all viable and, and, and all legitimate options for us. But I don't think there's any question that being part of the broader 2020 college football season – being able to participate in the postseason as it's currently constituted is by far the best answer for us. And the fact that we've been able to, been able to now position ourselves to do that, I think is a big win. Uh, you know, not having a, a standalone sort of randomly constituted season that, you know, is a complete unknown in terms of what its level of interest would be and what its impact on the next year might be uh, are things that, you know, I, I'm glad we're not going to have to try to answer. I, I like the fact that we're now, going to be in the 2020 college football season and, and give our teams and, and athletes a chance, student athletes a chance to, uh, to participate in, in this year as it, as it uh, is currently constituted. And then the same question for Jeff. That's all I have after that. Well, we wanted to definitely get back on the field and play football for our seniors, for all of our players. Uh, and when, when that was going to happen, we, you know, we understood what it took place and we're, we're willing to adjust. So, uh, to play football game, uh, football games again was the most important thing. And then the fact that now we're able to play uh, with the rest of college football is even better. So we're excited about this opportunity. We're excited to be able to, to get this in here at the, at the last minute and, and play as many games as we can uh, uh, week after week and, and uh, see how this thing can unfold. But uh, we're excited to play football. And I think getting back and playing a, a great schedule of conference opponents is going to be a lot of fun. Thank you. All right. Thanks, Dakota. Um, so we'll keep going down the line here. Um, Tom McKay. Are you still with us? Okay. We will move on then. Dylan Sin. I'm going to pass. Thank you. Okay. Sounds good. Um, I'm just going to keep going down the line here. Uh, Rich Nye. Whoever wants to tackle this, maybe Mitch or Mike, a uh, college football game on campus is such a big university event. It sounds like you do anticipate hosting games at ross Aid Stadium this season. Uh, we heard the Big Ten say no public sale of tickets. So who will get to come to these games, if anyone, and will there be any, what we might call a game day atmosphere or any events surrounding a home football game this fall? Sorry, President, let me you. Sorry, I must have bumped it, sorry. Rich, a very important question um, for a couple reasons. Uh, first, the short answer is, by collective agreement, no fans other than families of uh, players, coaches, and staff and um, uh, that, uh, I, I believe, is 
it, we could, this could be another area in which there's a, a revisitation of that issue sometime in the future if we learn more, but that certainly is the decision for now and, uh, and um, may well be the case for all the uh, nine games. Um, the, uh, the issue, however, of, of uh, how we celebrate, how we get all the enjoyment that we all derive from these games without jeopardizing the very fragile situation around keeping campus together at all is going to be a very important one. We're not going to have tailgating. We're not going to permit it. We're going to discourage it every way we can. We're going to have to fashion some way for uh, all of us to enjoy the games without congregating in ways that violate the, uh, all the rules that go into right now the Protect Purdue Pledge. So uh, big question. Um, I know we can solve it. We're just going to have to use some good common sense so that we can, you know, have the great fun of watching nine straight Boilermaker wins without, uh, you know, uh, uh, slipping backwards in terms of the health of the uh, overall campus community. And Jeff, if I could ask you a question, unless Mike wanted to add something. Okay, Jeff, um, we've got this new color-coded system now for whatever the positivity rate of your team is. Have, would you have any way of knowing if your team has ever been in what we might call the red or danger zone? And what is your concern that uh, a team in the league might fall into that red zone where all of a sudden they've got to sit out seven days and we start losing games uh, like we've kind of seen in the high school football season around Indiana? Well, that's uh, something that, uh, you know, we're going to have to monitor. I haven't looked at all the exact uh, percentages yet uh, on that, how that is going to work. I do know that uh, I'm sure some teams in the Big Ten uh, to this point have been above that. But I think with the daily antigen testing that we're going to do, we're hopeful to get that number down. And it's going to be a matter of how we can control our players outside in social environments uh, that's going to determine if that number gets too high. So we're hopeful that we can get in every game on our schedule, just like every other team is. But I do know that it's going to be some stringent guidelines that we're going to have to follow. And those numbers are a, a low percentage that we're going to have to do a great job uh, outside of the facility to make sure that uh, we don't exceed that in order to play football. Thank you. All right. Thanks, Rich. Um, let's go. Who do we have from ABC 57 News? Okay. Well, then we will keep going. Um, Kevin Brockway. Yeah, a question for Coach Brom. Um, just to kind of follow up on the point, the grind of playing nine games in nine weeks, and uh, also your thoughts on kind of the unique format of the uh, – Cross division game at the uh, end of the season, uh, being able to play that ninth game uh, during the same week of the Big Ten championship game. Well, I feel like the uh, nine games in a row that uh, we are getting ready to play is something that is very doable from our end. Uh, I know as coaches, you might get a bye week every now and then, but sometimes you really don't want to lose that momentum and that uh, uh, schedule that you have weekly in order to play football. You know, of course, if you have injuries, yes, it's going to affect you. But if you can keep guys healthy uh, to a certain extent, uh, let's go play uh, nine straight weeks and, and see how it measures out uh, in the end. Uh, when, it, when it comes to the, the, the possible nine-game format, it's, this is something that it, has been talked about for a while. Uh, and I know it was brought up really in a time where you didn't know if you were going to have uh, some bowl games where we – uh, the, the thought of having one versus one and two versus two, three versus three down down the line was something that seemed intriguing and, and, and fun and entertaining. So, you know, I don't know exactly how the ninth game is going to happen, but if it happens that way, we're going to be excited about it and look forward to it. As, as Mike said earlier, you know, the date of that is going to be December 19th. Uh, so, you know, for Marion, uh, if there's a chance to, to play those games in a dome like the Big Ten Championship, uh, because of the weather, we'd love to do that. But if not, we, we're 100% we're on board uh, and we're excited to play. So I think we'll be able to handle the nine games in a row, which is going to make sure you, you monitor and take care of, your, care of your team and practice so that you can get them healthy to the game. Thanks, Coach. Kevin, anything else? Okay. Um, 
Brad Brown. Question for Coach. Hey, Jeff, what will you get a sense of kind of the mentality of your kids over this time they've spent kind of in limbo, essentially, the past month, not knowing what the future was going to hold for this season? I think our team has handled it very well. You know, at first, uh, you know, maybe the first couple of days, the first week, uh, we were not very happy. It was something that uh, we didn't think was going to happen at that point, and we had to adjust. Uh, you know, I tried to kind of put out a, a spring plan just to give us some hope and optimism that, you know, we were going to get back on the field and uh, put that in the minds of many people that, hey, we're going to find a way to play again. So I think they felt confident that at some point we were going to play um, and that at some point all of our guys were going to get that opportunity. But now that uh, we've been able to speed up that process and find a way to get into playing college football uh, amongst the others, even though we're just going to have a conference-only schedule, I think it's exciting for them. And I think they're looking forward to it. And I know we'll attack this next month or five or six weeks or whatever that is before the first game happens uh, with a lot of excitement. And uh, Hopefully our work ethic will be flying a high, uh, sky high and we'll be ready to go to work. But I know our guys are looking forward to get back on the field and playing against great competition. Great. Thanks, Coach. Thank you. All right, Phil, and I'm gonna. I'm probably gonna butcher your last name, so I apologize in advance. Nardiello. We're okay. We pass. Okay, sounds great. Ross Bolin. Hey, coach. Question for you. You you mentioned your spring plan. Um, you've you've been on the front line with this uh, all along. Just curious, what your excitement level is with when you got the news that you were going to be able to play and, and play safely? Well, we're, we're extremely excited. Myself, our coaches, our team, I know our fans are to get back to playing football and to have a time frame and hopefully an exact schedule here soon. Um, you know, we, we want to play. And it's something that uh, all of our guys work extremely hard to go out there and compete and give themselves an opportunity to, to have fun playing a game they love. Uh, it's a fun for fans. It's fun for families to gather together and, and uh, kind of celebrate on the football field and go through a lot of hopefully wins and even a couple of tough times together and learn from it. But uh, this is an exciting brand of football against uh, great uh, opponents. Um, and, and I know our guys are going to work hard to take on that challenge. So uh, playing the game, uh, knowing that we can get back and doing it here soon, it's going to be a lot of fun. And we're going to look forward to these next few few weeks of preparation. Thanks, Ross. Anything else? Okay. I'm sorry. No, I'm good. Thank you. Very good. Thank you. Um, Rich Van Wick. I don't think he's with us anymore. Okay. So we'll go with that one. Um, did I get everybody from WTHR? Or were there any other questions? Yes, you did. Thank you. Perfect. Thank you. Um, and I think we have somebody from the exponent on. Yes. Oh, Joe. Hi. Yes. Hello. Stevens here too. Uh, I have a few questions for Mike about the testing protocols. Mike, can you give a little bit more detail on the cardiac testing and sort of what that what that is going to look like? What specific things are going to be screened for? How that's going to work for someone who tests positive? And has Purdue assigned a cardiologist yet? Uh, I'll do my best on that, Joe. Uh, we have a cardiologist that we work with down in Indianapolis who is spectacular um, that we've been working with, and, uh, and we, we, we intend to continue our relationship with him. Uh, the protocol will be, as I understand it, and I'm, I am not the medical expert on this, but I'm going to give you my best shot, mm -hmm. is that everybody that has a COVID-positive test uh, with no sooner than 14 days after the onset of their symptoms, uh, we'll go through an entire battery of cardiac screening, which will include a EKG, an echocardiogram, a cardiac MRI, and all the other uh, sort of blood markers and uh, other tests that you would go through. So it would be the, the complete workup. Uh, and then post that test, there would still be a seven day return to activity uh, period of time before someone would actually be, be able to be cleared to come back in, assuming those tests all are negative. So it, it, it is an extremely comprehensive and, and probably, uh, as our medical people have described, that this is a, a 
in an abundance of caution type approach. I mean, it is really at the uh, very high end of, of, of caution and, and uh, being careful uh, in regards to potential uh, cardiac issues that may arise. So I think it's a, it's a very exhaustive set of principles. In terms of the daily testing, yeah, I'm sorry. In terms of the daily testing, is that something that Athletics will work with Product Purdue Health Center or sports medicine staff, or is that solely going to be with whatever third-party company you guys choose? Uh, Joe, the, uh, the daily testing will be a conference-wide program that is uh, that, again, will be finalized here, I, I believe, within days um, with, with one of two companies that we are in, in, that the league is in conversation with. I believe that uh, that will also include bringing an on-site to each of our 14 campuses, having personnel on-site to administer those tests and read them on a daily basis. So it will not, it will not necessarily run through our, our typical process that our current testing program runs through. It'll be a, a third-party testing regimen. Thank you. So for families who are attending games and also media who are attending games, do you know if they will have to have some sort of test before they can attend I could have not. that uh that will be that will be the case we have not yet gotten to that level of detail I and mean, this is all breaking news at this point and thankfully we've got till the end of october to figure some of those things out uh but we have not we have not done that i don't believe there'll be any testing for for those folks there'll be obviously social distancing and and other and masking and all those kind of things will be part of it uh, but i don't believe there'll be a test other than the you know the the what we've all become used to where if you're not feeling well or anything on any given day, you're encouraged, strongly encouraged to stay home. You know, don't, don't come. But, uh, but I don't believe at this point we're anticipating testing those families. Thank you. I just have one more question for coach Brown. Coach, were you able to talk to the team in person today or yesterday about the decision? And if so, how did that go? Well, we haven't spoken to the team yet today. Uh, we had practice yesterday. Uh, and, uh, you know, I've kept them in the loop as far as what I thought was taking place and uh, when I thought the timetable may happen. Um, you know, it wasn't until maybe less than two weeks ago did we get an idea that maybe there's a slight uh, chance that we could get back to playing in the fall. And then I know a lot of work was put in uh, to try to make sure that happened, uh, which our people did a great job of finding a way to, finding a way to get that information accurately presented to our presidents and chancellors. Uh, so we knew that was gonna be a, a possible chance and other options that were on the table. So we've communicated pretty much every day with our guys to keep them in the loop. So I think they felt good about, you know, all the different scenarios that could play out. And I know they're gonna be excited to, uh, to hear that we're back on the field again. Did you have anything? Um, all right, I just had one more uh, clarifying question for Mike, if that's okay. Mike, I, I know you already mentioned that you have two potential companies. Can you just give the names of those two that are being decided between? Well, since we're, since we're not doing the negotiations here locally, Joe, I don't think it's it's appropriate for me to share that. Those those are being handled at the conference office level, and uh, and when we when we select one, we'll all know who that is. But uh, yeah, not, not for me to share. Understood. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay. Thanks all. I think I got everybody. So we will call it a day, and appreciate everybody tuning in. Today. Oh yes, Mike. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, one for Mitch. One for for Mike. Uh, uh, the, the, the protocols that are now put in place for football, uh, does that give you confidence that a basketball season can take place? And is that something that, that you would sign off on right now, getting, is, getting a basketball, basketball season going? Mike, you know how much I hope it's the case. And, and I will say that in a general sense, as came up a couple times in this conversation, um, Every week that goes by, we learn more, we find new ways, I, I think, to manage this disease, whether it's uh, in the context of athletics or more generally. And so uh, I think we're gaining on this uh, bug. But, um, and so from that standpoint, yes, I'm feeling um, more optimistic. But it, for obvious reasons, basketball is a completely different environment than, uh, you know, uh, than, than uh, open air sports, uh, football, and and please don't forget uh, that we're bringing back our other uh, fall sports, or at least some of them. Um, so premature to say anything more about it, but a lot of a lot of thoughts going into it. And again, I'm 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 more hopeful all the time, just because uh, as uh, 
uh, not just universities, but as society, we're getting better and, uh, and, uh, at managing this and getting better perspective about where the dangers are and are not. And, and for Mike, are you, are you confident that the Purdue-Indiana game will be a protected crossover in this eight-game schedule? Uh, I, be, I believe that'll be the case, Mike. I mean, it, the, the very preliminary conversation we had uh, Monday, I believe it was, on that topic, uh, that was the indication. And so I think that that will be part of it. Thank you. All right. Well, thanks, everybody. Have a wonderful rest of your Wednesday. And um, we'll talk again soon.